All right, so this is going to be a two-part video. The first part is going to be a basic educational session on how hot water recirculators work. Uh, and then the second part of this video is going to be a review of the Watts 500-800, which is the unit that I bought. Um, and then part two of this video is going to be uh, the installation process for this particular unit, which is pretty much the same process for all of the other hot water recirculators that uh, are available on the market. Uh, but I'll cover the differences between the different types of units in that second video, uh, which I'll link to in the description as well. Okay, so for basics, the hot water recirculators uh, work um, by replacing the cold water in your, in your pipes with hot water. Um, the reason that the water in your shower is cold in the morning is because uh, the water sits overnight and so it becomes the same temperature as the air around it, uh, which is usually somewhere around 60 to 70 degrees, whereas water that you want for a shower or to wash your hands is closer to 90 to 120 degrees, somewhere in that range. So when water sits overnight, it gets very cold. Um, and so what this hot water pump will do is it will constantly push hot water through your tubes so that you constantly have hot water available uh, if you want to request it, if you will. Um, and so how that works, uh, the, the main driver is this piece right here. It's called the sensor valve. And the sensor valve uh, regulates the flow between the hot water that would normally just go up to your faucet or to your shower. Um, and it connects it with the cold water, which comes in this side, and it connects it through this tube right here. So the way that it works is hot water will uh, constantly be flowing through this middle section, uh, whereas normally it could only go up through the spout. Um, so it goes through this middle section, and that way you always have a constant flow of water and you'll always have hot water are ready to go when you want to use it. Now the downside is that your cold water is going to be more lukewarm or warmer uh, than ice cold which is what you're used to. Um, so in that regard you would have to wait a little bit longer for cold water. Uh, so this is the sensor valve. Um, this is the actual pump and the timer. Now in order to move that water from the hot side to the cold side and constantly have that hot water available you have to push the water and that's what this pump does. Um, along with the timer that's uh, attached to it. This is the timing device and then the pump is this big part down here. Uh, the timer is used to uh, say when you want this pump to work and when you don't want it to work. So the timer is useful uh, so that the pump isn't running 24 seven and you're not wasting uh, any electricity or power and therefore losing money. Um, so what you can do is you can set it to only run for let's say two to four hours a day, uh, just you know in the morning or at night when you think you're gonna be taking showers or washing your face or whatever. Um, so that's the timer. Uh, you can set it to whatever time period you want. Some units have this timer, some of them don't. Uh, I wanted it, so this is the model that I got. This is the Watts 500-800. Um, okay, so that's how they uh, these systems work in general. Um, now this unit in, in particular, which I'll link to in the description again, uh, is, is my favorite. Uh, this isn't the first one that I've installed. It's about $200 on Amazon. Um, again, which I'll link to. Uh, it's got the timer, um, it's got the sensor valve included, it comes with some of the plumbing fixtures uh, and some screws to, to attach the sensor valve to the wall. Um, and uh, it comes with pretty much everything that you need and it's the least expensive uh, of all of the options. There's a Grundfos model that's identical to this that costs 40, 50 bucks more. Uh, the only difference is that one's red versus this one being blue. So. Uh, this is my go-to model. This is what I suggest to everyone. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much everything that you'll need. This is the model that uh, is installed by your water heater and under your sink. So this part, the sensor valve, goes under your sink, um, under the sink that's furthest away from your hot water heater. So let's say your hot water heater is in the garage and you want uh, hot water in your master bathroom, you will attach this to the, uh, the pipes going up into the faucet of your master bathroom, uh, again, or whichever faucet is furthest away from your, your heater. Uh, so that's one of the parts. The, the second part is, uh, again, the timer or pump unit, and that goes uh, right next to your actual uh, water heater. This part needs to be plugged in for the timer, um, so you gotta make sure that you have one of those plugs available. There are also units that have both of these pieces combined, 
and I'll link to those uh, in, in the description as well. Um, those are good units too, a little bit more expensive. Uh, and then again, if the sensor valve breaks, you're sort of in trouble because you have to replace the whole unit. Whereas with these, if the sensor valve breaks, you can get a new one for 40 or $50, um, which isn't too bad. Um, so again, this piece goes by the water heater and this piece goes under your sink. And I'm gonna make an installation video also to show you guys exactly how easy it is uh, to install these. You don't need a plumber or anything like that. Uh, you know, just a couple of wrenches and anyone can have this installed in about 30 minutes or so. Um, so I'll link to the next video and uh, thanks for watching.